My task this season cannot be exceptionally difficult. Hastings did it after all. How hard can it be? Oh, spoke with such feeling too. I do not need feeling. What I need is what I have, and that is a list. Tolerable, dutiful, suitable enough hips for childbearing and at least half a brain. And that last part is, is not so much a requirement, but a preference, in fact. Best of luck to you, brother. You shall certainly need it this season. And your ring. When you get the chance, I shall need it. I should simply like to be prepared for when the opportunity presents itself. The opportunity? Dearest, I shall be more than happy to give you my ring when you find someone with whom you are very much in love. Whoa there! Yes. Are you in trouble? You enjoying your victory lap? Oh, fuck. You worry about being seen. I worry about meeting strange men at parks at dawn who fail to leave me alone with all of their questions. Your secret is safe with me. I shall not tell a soul. How grateful I am. Losing races to strange women in such parks at dawn. We've not yet been introduced. I'm afraid that is not possible. Not when I have a victory lap to enjoy. <laughs> My eldest, Lady Danbury, Miss Kate Sharma. I am not here to find a husband for myself, only for my sister. Yes, yes, you are but a dear old maid. Uh, who shall be perfectly happy doting on my many nieces and nephews one day soon. You must be excited. This is the first chapter of a happy story. All you have to do this evening is remember what it is you are looking for. You will speak in a manner that only your heart can hear. That is the true love you deserve. Oh, I'm sure there is someone here who will charm you. I know that gentleman. Who? The Viscount. I do not believe I've yet made an introduction. Of course. It must be my mistake. He may very well be our most eligible bachelor indeed. He is very handsome. Yes. I suppose he is. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. You two will soon submit to this ridiculous rigmarole of courtship. Do not tell us you were hoping for a love match. Love is the last thing I desire. You. I was wondering if we'd meet again. So you might discern if my wit is acceptable, my manners genteel. Are the young ladies of London truly so easily won by a pleasing smile and absolutely nothing more? So you find my smile pleasing? I find your opinion of yourself entirely too high. Your character is as deficient as your horsemanship. I shall bid you good night. People are watching, my dear. You are clearly upset. What is clear is we are woefully unprepared to navigate this lion's den. Have you found a wife yet? Or are you planning to offend every young girl until there are none left? Anthony. I'm looking for perfection, Mother, and you should be too. The woman I marry shall be the Viscountess Bridgerton, the lady of this household responsible for launching my sisters and bearing my children. This is the duty I must fulfill. You will end up alone with such expectations. We shall have our diamond tonight, and I shall have my wife. Miss Edwina Sharma. Is your father in attendance? I should like to speak with him. Sadly, my father died years ago. Oh. Perhaps you could speak with my sister. It is her blessing you shall need if we are. Oh, here she is now. Miss Sharma, my lord. Oh. Is something wrong, Bibi? You are not to go near that man. Do you understand? Miss Edwina will suffice. I see you've left off Lord Bridgerton. He stated rather clearly that he seeks a wife only to fulfil his duty and in fact does not believe in love at all. She's rather thorny, I take it. Indeed. <gasps> Every rose does have its thorn after all. Did I say something funny? I believe you did. I'm afraid my sister already has an escort for today, Mr Dorset. That is very well, though I was hoping to speak with you. One can tell a great deal about a man from his family, I rather think. Yes, there are many excellent, affectionate families of the Tom, are there not? No, none quite as inviting as the Bridgertons. Oh. Ah. It's a splendid day for a race. You simply chose the horse everyone else has chosen. The elder sister seems set against the match. It seems Miss Edwina desires a love match, something the Viscount clearly does not. Perhaps her mind can be changed. Perhaps so can the Viscount. Should we separate them? It's all in good spirit. Why do you jab at Lord Bridgerton, sir? If the Viscount is serious about courting my sister, is it not my duty to try his mettle? And the Viscount does not like to lose. He's never stomached even back at Oxford. You were sent here to distract me, all so Lord Bridgerton could get closer to my sister. Lord Bridgerton made certain I play the fool. Let us go. You told me Appa always said it takes a courageous man to go after what he truly wants. Appa also said the mark of a true gentleman is honesty, 
something the Viscount notably lacks. Pompous and arrogant and quite sure she knows best in every situation. Oh, she sounds like a terrible nuisance. Especially since you are the one who knows best in every situation. How much clearer must I be? I bought a gift for Miss Edwina. Take your Trojan horse elsewhere. You act as if I'm some kind of villain. But has it ever occurred to you this might in fact be about what your sister wishes for instead? She is looking out for her sister. She hopes to find her a love match, and with you, apparently so forthright in your disdain for such a thing. Perhaps Miss Edwina's other suitors plan on choosing their words more wisely tonight. You would willingly take on any pain, any burden for her, to honor her. Miss Edwina, I could stand here and pretend to be someone I am not. I could pretend to want the very same things as you, but I would be lying. But I assure you that when it comes to action and duty, I shall never be found lacking. I am aware I have made a fool of myself tonight, Lady Danbury. I do not need to hear it from you. Once Edwina is married, I shall return home alone, only too glad to never set foot in the city again. You wish to be alone? At a mere six and twenty? Are you not alone yourself? I watch you. I see you. You are more than content. Because I have lived a life. I am a widow. I have loved. I have lost. Well, I cannot wait to meet the woman who has captured your heart. Tell me, what is she like? Miss Edwina is the picture of grace, beauty, and charm. Unfortunately, she has a most annoying sister who has styled herself as something of a gatekeeper. I'm afraid you must all help me win over both sisters if I'm to find my bride. Seeing as though you were such a help to me last season, it would only be fair of me to return the favor. Is that a promise or a threat? I see my plan to win you over is already working. I was smiling at the view, which you are now blocking. Mark my words, Miss Sharma. By the end of your stay, your opinion of me will be much improved. Might as well his. And you must be Miss Edwina. No. This is her sister. So you're quite set on your decision then, I take it. You should take the opportunity to get to know one another. Mm. Unnecessary. Miss Edwina will make the perfect Viscountess, to be sure. It is a poor player who plays the game and a wise one who plays their opponent. I believe I should rather enjoy this game. Let me guess, the most ruthless cutthroat player. <laughs> Why you have made is a great thing. <laughs> you pick based on alphabetical order. That is the precedent. It is meant to be a game, is it not? Let's yes, but please now. But Kate always has had my best interests at heart. She bears a heavy responsibility for our family. That sounds remarkably similar to you, Anthony. Much familiar responsibility to bear indeed. I should like to, uh, I should like to ask you to please refrain from telling anyone back in London about yesterday's loss. I feared the harm to my reputation would simply be too great. You've bungled this entire affair. Miss Sharma. No, no. All you are doing, my lord, is toying with the emotions of an impressionable young lady. I am now quite certain I know why he has not yet made his declaration. It's because of you. What I need is your help getting him to fall in love with you. Did you tell the Viscount about your beasting? I got stung. Oh. I am having them spend the day together, in the hopes of their finally finding common ground. If we find nothing, I shall offer myself up for a target practice. You were overcome. Indeed I was not. You were the one who then looked at me. You looked at me? Not in the way that you did. And how exactly did I look? How did he die? He was stung by a bee. No My Lord. Oh, truly, brother, is there really no one you share similarities with? No one at all. And you are ready to grant him your blessing, are you not? Michelle may have the stars. My sister to be happy. Can you make her happy? If your silence is an indication you are reconsidering your declaration. Is that what you want for me to reconsider? It does not matter what I want. I do not think that is true. I am to return to India. The moment my sister marries. You will abandon her. Why are you so distressed? 
seems to me you will find any excuse you can to keep me away from your sister. That is it, is it not? You simply do not like me. Of course I do not like Then you. tell me why. Because you vex me! And what is it? What do you do you think you do to me? Say you do not care for me. Oh. Because one way or another, these kind of feelings always have a way of coming to the surface. And what kind of feelings are they? Love. Then I know what I must do. Miss Irina Sharma. Will you marry me? It is like a fairy tale come true. You deserve nothing less, Bond. Lord Bridgerton? Michelle. There is nothing appropriate about what you were doing proceeding with this engagement. On the contrary, I believe it is the most proper outcome for all. Oh, and what of everything that passed between us at Aubrey Hall? Need I remind you, sir, if anyone other than your sister discovered us in the library that night, then we too would be obliged to wait. Nothing happened in that library. Though would the two of us being obliged to marry be the outcome you desire? Of course not. Then let us both be glad we have avoided such an unthinkable fate. We may use your finger to size the ring. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. That shan't be necessary. Nonsense. It is the ring my father gave to my mother before they were wed. Only a fool would jeopardize the marriage now. Are you that fool? I know that I no. die with What a handsome couple they make. <laughs> Pardon me? Michonne. Lord Bridgerton. So I had a choice to make between my family and my heart. And did you ever regret that choice? Why will you not accept? that the love match between you and father was the exception, not the rule. Because I wish for you two to know the joy of an exceptional marriage. It is a very powerful thing to meet someone and feel that you know them in a way unlike any other. My feelings are of no concern. What matters is my responsibility, which has always been to wed. My darling. I see this one has inherited your penchant for avoiding the truth. Or maybe that's something she inherited from her father. That is enough. All along, you have been set on marrying my sister despite my every objection, might I add. And now you intend to cast her aside. Why? This should not be your burden. What burden would it be to marry the person I love? You love him. Once the engagement is over, our paths need never cross again. It will be as if we had never met. You cannot. You cannot do that. Michelle, you cannot break my sister's heart. I don't understand. You have been against this union from the start. I was wrong! Feeling that plagues us so, it will pass. It will become tenable, it will become bearable. And soon enough it will be as if we never felt it at all. Mere passion. It must, because it has to. I shall see that the wedding shall take place as soon as possible. You both get to choose your passions and adventures, while I, on the other hand, must fulfill my Tell duty. Tell me, dear brother, once you marry, will your duty finally be fulfilled so you can stop reminding everyone of it? True love is something else entirely. It is when the rest of the world goes quiet. It is not eyes that meet, but souls that dance, settle into each other. The sister. The sister. To besting her. And what if the sister? She has made her own plans for the future. Plans which do not include me. We have decided there is nothing more between us. There cannot be. It should not be a luxury, but a right to choose, to fight for the family that you want. I fight for the family that I have. Him. All this time, you wanted him for yourself. Lord, 
that is not... Oh, you cannot deny it now, Kate! How could I have been such a fool? Do you love him? Go. Anywhere else, Kate. And what is it that you believe we share? Our places. Our roles. And what of my sister? What role will she play between us in the future? The thorn easily removed from the blossoming flower of our lives. She shall have no place in our future. You should not be here. Just, just... My feelings for Lord Bridgerton do not matter anymore. We do not have a future together. But you, you, Edwina, were born to be Viscountess. I cannot marry you. I may not know exactly what true love feels like, but I certainly know what it is not. It is not deception, or wandering eyes, or a role to be fulfilled. You will never meet my eyes in the same manner that you met my sisters on that altar today. You will never. I can be sure that what I leave behind is not my loss. It is yours. Your dream, your plan, your feelings that I had merely borrowed. Your sister is braver and wiser than this bill. She had the courage to act on what she sensed between us, and here we are, standing perfectly still. The moment we step foot outside those doors, We face the truth. Of our situation. Of our failures. We have indeed failed, my lord. Of our duties. Of our responsibilities. We have failed at it all. I guess that's love. I can't pretend. I can't pretend. Oh, oh, oh. A respectable family is headed by gentlemen. Is it not? Another ball, so that the ton might inspect this wreckage with an even closer eye. A ball may very well work. After all, the Viscount and my sister have been so good at hiding their true feelings from everyone in public this far. It should not trouble them to do the same a little longer. Edwina. Was I truly that blind? I do not know what you mean to say. What she means to say, Anthony, is that those of us in this room at present are the only ones who know the full truth of the matter. And we would prefer to keep it that way. You have nothing to worry about. I will play the part. I realize I have indeed failed, and more things than you and Father will ever know. How long do you plan on punishing yourself for and wallowing in such misery? <clears throat> my husband died, it should have been me taking on my family's burden, not Kate. She sacrificed far too much for us, indeed. You saw up and Mama how happy they once were. What I saw is how even that ended in tragedy. We did a terrible thing. We should be ashamed of what we did. When this is you compromising. Oh, good night, my lord. Can you ever just agree? You give me orders and you expect me to listen. I do not listen. Well, perhaps you should. Oh, I shall never listen to you or to anyone I wholeheartedly disagree with. Yeah. The fact it has taken you this long to come to terms with that, to accept that fact. You wish to know why? I am uncertain you even know why. I know why. Oh, here we go. Enthrall me with your self-knowledge and awareness. It is because I've never met anyone like you. It is maddening. How much you consume my very being. I'm nearly certain every last one of my brothers and sisters secretly despise me. My own mother at that, despite the fact I've lived the better part of my life for them. And yet still, all I find myself thinking about, all I find myself being able to breathe for, is you. You have to stop. I have to stop. There is no other course of action to be concluded. You must stop. It has been you. It has been you this entire time, spinning my world off its axis, making me reconsider everything I've ever told myself. I came here resolved to save my family. Everything I have ever done has, has been, been for them. Has been for them. Yeah. You are the one who must stop. 
Before what? Before we both finally do something for ourselves? Go in sign. What did I tell you about you and your orders? I will stop. Do not stop. I will stop. Do not stop. I must speak with Miss Sharma. She does not seem to be here. One of the horses is gone too. Guys! Stay with me. Come on now. Come on now. Are you alright? It is all my fault. You have not been to see her. It has been a week. Have I not made it clear that I've been busy? Did Lord Bridgeton come to see me? He... Did he rescued you in the park? Miss... She's awake. Mrs. Wilson heard from one of the maids. <laughs> and I would undoubtedly feel the same pain I felt all over again if I had to. Because real... True love is worth it. Do not lose her, Anthony. I call on you to apologize. You deserved so much more than that. I came to apologize yes, you already and said to that. ask you to marry me. Uh, I'm here. What are you doing? And I'm asking no, you. No, I, my lord, I, I do not need you to ask me anything at all. Kate. I'm returning to India. You are running away. It grieves me to think you do not believe you deserve all of the love in the world. He does not love me, Mama. Oh, well, I, I could not allow it. Oh, be unafraid to follow your heart after doing the exact opposite for far too long. Are you going to ask me to dance? One last time. Are you going to say yes? Just keep looking at me. No one else matters. I think they look beautiful together. Beautiful indeed. You love your family dearly. As much as you love yours. I was fearful of losing you. It is why I could not visit you after your accident. I could not bring myself to you. I love you. I have loved you from the moment we raced each other in that park. I have loved you at every dance, on every walk, every time we've been together and every time we've been apart. You do not have to accept it, you do not have to embrace it. Or even allow it, knowing you, you probably will not, but you must know in your heart. You must feel it, because I do. I want a life that suits us both. I know I am imperfect, but I will humble myself before you because I cannot imagine my life without you, and that is why I wish to marry you. You do know there will never be a day where you do not vex me. Is that a promise, Kathane <laughs> Shama? Yes, it is a promise. Well then. It seems the two of us are finally seeing eye to eye on something. I suppose we are. Right, we've all picked, but left the mallet of death. Bobby! Oh, is your dog? Oh, and yours through marriage. I do not recall ever making such an agreement. Ah, well, that is between you and him. He does not listen to me. I believe I do. I suppose that means we are cutting out. No, 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 no we're not, not cutting a chance. out. Unless we want to take this opportunity to return upstairs. 
and admit defeat? Never.